From the rich storyline of both shows to the distinctive and visually appealing fighting styles used, let's see whether Cobra Kai or Kung Fu is a better TV series. Starting off with the plot of Cobra Kai and Kung Fu. First things first, the 2021 CW show Kung Fu is considered a breath of fresh air. It's based on the 1970s series of the same name, but the show isn't a reboot. It's a reimagination, meaning there's room for creative freedom, which has been exercised quite often in the show. Anyway, the show follows the story of Nikki Shen, a young Chinese-American woman who experiences an existential crisis during her visit to China. And while she's down the rabbit hole of existential dread, she decides to throw caution to the wind and join an all-female Shaolin monastery. Because why not? Once she's learned everything necessary, she returns to her home in San Francisco and uses her skills and Shaolin values to protect everyone from danger, like crime, corruption, and the triad. It's got elements of fantasy, some cheesy jokes, and the classic CW superhero tropes that all of the CW projects all share. In contrast, Cobra Kai is pretty different because, for one, it's based in California, which is made clear when places like Reseda, Encino, and Tarzana are name dropped. Also, it initially sheds light on the life of Johnny Lawrence after the events of the Karate Kid franchise. And honestly, things aren't looking too good for him. That is, until he decides to train Miguel and reopen the Cobra Kai dojo, a risky move that ultimately attracts more enemies than friends. And one really paranoid Daniel LaRusso, who's hellbent on stopping the Cobra Kai craze from engulfing the valley. Now that we've seen all the story differences, what about all the ways that they're similar? I mean, look, the main theme of both Cobra Kai and Kung Fu is to protect what matters the most to our heroes. In terms of Kung Fu, our main character, Nikki Shen, fights to keep her city and loved ones safe from threats like the Triad, an enemy that's got beef with her family that goes way back. And in Cobra Kai, the main threat that characters Johnny Lawrence and Danny LaRusso face is the Cobra Kai dojo itself. Whether it's in the form of Sensei's crease and Terry Silver returning to create havoc or through the dojo's rapid expansion and tendency to brainwash students, LaRusso and Johnny do everything in their power to keep their respective dojos safe from Cobra Kai attacks. And later on as the series progresses, they have to consider the safety of their friends and family as well. Because nothing says we're willing to put our differences aside and work together as a team quite like a sociopathic, silver-haired investor slash a Cobra Kai sensei. I'm <coughs> Terry Silver! And get this, he won't stop till the way of the fist is adopted all over the karate world. That's basically what the triad is all about too. With the characters themselves out of the way, what about the people who play them? Yep, it's time to talk about the cast of Cobra Kai. Okay, so some fans think that this show has the superior cast. It wins votes on the account of the nostalgia factor that the show likes to milk. Cobra Kai brought its Karate Kid stars back into the spotlight. I'm talking about fan favorites Ralph Macchio and William Zabka. In fact, as the series progresses, a bunch of OG characters from Karate Kid either have cameo roles or a recurring side character status, and fans love it. Whenever they see one of the older actors in the Karate Kid, Cobra Kai-verse, they eat it up. And that's one reason why the cast is more famous. Because, like I mentioned, they're riding on the coattails of nostalgia. Other than Machio and Zabka, who are well-known actors in their own right, the main cast also has Courtney Hengler, playing the role of Amanda LaRusso, and Martin Cove, who reprises his role of John Kreese. Oh, and another actor from the Karate Kid universe who joined the Cobra Kaiverse is Thomas Ian Griffith, who's back as the main antagonist, Terry Silver. But what about the Cobra Kai generation? Are they popular? Some faces, like the former Disney kid Peyton List, Netflix's He's All That star Tanner Buchanan, and actress Mary Mouser are immediately recognizable. Oh, and the same goes for Sholo Maridueña, whose character Miguel Diaz wins the hearts of both the fans and Sensei Lawrence, while others, like Jacob Bertrand, who plays Mohawk rocking Eli Hawk Moskowitz, and Johnny DiCenzo 
Naruto are relatively new faces for the audience, though that's still a lot more recognizable than the other side, because the cast of Kung Fu doesn't have nearly as many mainstream stars. The main protagonist, Nikki Shen, is played by the all-time fave Legacy star Olivia Leung. Then there's Henry Yang, an expert on Chinese mythology and martial arts who's played by actor Eddie Liu. The Singaporean actress, King Hua Tan, plays the role of Nikki's mother. Althea Shen, Nikki's sister, is played by Shannon Dang and has had a difficult past. While the season 2 regular, Yvonne Chapman, plays the role of Jilan Zhang, Nikki's archenemy. Stardom aside, even the fighting in the show's not like the one in Cobra Kai, because that series is all about its refined karate. Now, Cobra Kai karate is unique, because it's actually its own style of karate derived from Shotokan and the American version of Tong Su Do karate. It's a combo of several fighting arts that were meshed together. Cobra Kai uses lots of sidekicks, sweeps knee kicks, and roundhouse kicks, which are combined with straight punches and back fist. While its Japanese karate counterpart is the Miyagi-Do Gojuru style. This uses more Korean-based kicks and sweeps. Johnny, for example, practices what he preaches, cause he's been seen using different kicks throughout the show, like the outside crescent kick, which is used both in Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, especially in the All Valley Tournament. And the Hisageri, aka the knee kick, which he uses to fight off Miguel's bullies in front of the liquor store in season 1. But wait, what kind of fighting styles does the Kung Fu series explore? The characters' fighting styles vary a lot, and it's got something to do with who they are, not where they come from. Nikki, for example, came back home from a Shaolin temple, which means her specific Kung Fu style is Regal. Plus, she always carries the principles that she was taught at the temple close to her. While in comparison, Henry's street smarts helped him adopt a unique fighting style which is basically a mix of styles that gel well together. And Jilan's training as an assassin results in them having a much more lethal fighting approach, even though it's technically also kung fu. Even Nikki's romance with Henry impacts how she fights, as she keeps her Shaolin principles at the forefront, while also absorbing whatever she's learned during her training sessions with him. Also, it's important to note that the fight scenes in the show can't be too long, an issue that's happened often in the past, but the stunt team found a solution. They've focused more on the visual quality of the fight than the brute quantity of kicks and punches used. That said, there's one question left to be answered now. Which series is better? Some fans argue that if you want to enjoy a more thematic fight, then Kung Fu is a better TV series. And if you enjoy the thrill that comes with watching karate in its refined glory, then Cobra Kai should be on your watch list if it isn't already. But hey, even if you like one show more than the other, chill. Cause this is a judgment-free zone. And on that note, this was it for whether Cobra Kai or Kung Fu was the better series. I care about my students. They're strong and they're true fighters.